Stephanie Kleiner Albrecht is the International Crisis Group's Northeast Asia Project Director. She joins us now from Beijing. Thank you very much indeed. Stephanie Kleiner Albrecht, um, there was a quote there from the US President Obama talking about changing the calculus uh, uh, of the decision making in Tehran. What about uh, the US's attempt to change the calculus of thinking in Beijing. Has anything really changed? Is China really going to back sanctions? You know, China has agreed to negotiate on sanctions. And the crucial um, next step is to see what type of a resolution, what elements within the resolution China will agree to. This is really just the very first step. China has been engaging in a delay and weaken strategy with regard to sanctions on Iran. Um, this is just the second part of the strategy. Now we're getting into negotiations where there will be um, many, many efforts on China's part to really try and um, throw out some of the more stringent provisions. Uh, but how significant is it that China is at least taking part in the negotiations? I mean, is there a sense there that China is feeling isolated now? Well, you know, China was always going to join some form of resolution on Iran because China abhors being isolated in the Security Council. And it's already been many months that it's been clear that Moscow's position has come over to that of the West. So China will work on a resolution. The question is what type of resolution we'll get. And what about the ties between China and Iran? To what extent is it willing to make compromises on that relationship because of what the world would see probably as a bigger, more important relationship between China and Washington? Well, clearly China has been balancing its relationship with Iran as it balances its relationship with the West. At the end of the day, um, China is confident that it should go with a weakened form of sanctions and that it can probably diversify its imports of oil to the extent necessary that it won't be um, dramatically harmed by, by the resolution. But at the same time, it's going to negotiate very, very hard to ensure that its economic interests are not harmed by the provisions of the resolution. Yeah, and they are extensive, as we just explained there. Um, do you foresee difficulties in the longer term for China trying to tread what could be quite a difficult tightrope. Well, it's clear that, you know, there's a lot of focus right now on this so-called agreement of China to, to negotiate, but this is really just the very first step. There's negotiations that could take many, many weeks, and then the resolution will be passed, and then there's implementation of the resolution. And we've seen already in the case of North Korea that it really has to be a long, drawn-out process where there's a lot of pressure um, that continues on China and other member states to actually implement whatever sanctions resolution is adopted at the Security Council. You know, when the word first came out at the nuclear summit that China was going to take part in the negotiations, it seemed that the Obama administration spin doctors will make it, it sound as quite a major step. You're saying um, it's not. What do you read into that about the way that the Obama administration is dealing with China and how successful it is? I think it's been clear that um, China has agreed to attend this summit at a very high level. I think it's because China puts a lot of priority on nonproliferation. I think it bodes well for U.S.-China ties, but there's going to be a lot of uh, rough territory ahead, whether it be in negotiating third country issues such as Iran, North Korea, and other uh, strategic challenges as well as um, the currency issue, which of course is, is just beginning um, to be negotiated and, and dealt with. Yes, we're going to hear a lot more about the Yuan in the future. But for the time being, thank you very much indeed, Stephanie Kleiner Albrecht, Northeast Asia Project Director for the International Crisis Group.